all of that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm going to do what I always do on here, here on my channel, which is just be real about my walk with Christ and the things that I'm going through, with the things that I'm learning from God that he teaches me through his Holy Spirit and in hopes that it will also help you in your walk with the Lord. So, um, well, God's word is so powerful, y'all. I have been um, so wronged, so wronged. Today, I am going through some horrible persecution. So I volunteer at this place and um, I feed, I, well, I wipe down the tables, prepare the tables and serve food to the people that live in the residence and then we serve food to the homeless. And um, you know, I live for the Lord. I live to share his word. I mean. This is the core of my being, okay? I am born again. And Jesus says, if you follow me, I will make you a fisher of men, okay? I follow Christ. I can't help but to be a fisher of men. Because he opens your eyes to the reality of things. And heaven and hell. And my perspective is not of this world. It is not to live for this world. It is to live for Christ. And to share the gospel and save people's soul from hell. Well, it's not me that saves them. It's the Lord. But he does that through me sharing his word. So, of course, you know, there's demons um, that are being stirred up in people. And coming against me and, you know, people... Uh, when you speak truth, uh, the gospel truth, people get offended, they get angry, and they um, come against you. And that's exactly what is happening. And um, it, I, I have been so angry because it's supposed to be a Christian-based program. It's actually, it's called the Samaritan House in Long Beach. And it's supposed to be a Christian-based program. They have Christian literature in this one building that they have where you go and you, you do interviews with them and just have conversations. They do a lot of stuff through that building. They have Christian-based literature. They have, um, uh, they have Bible study. They, they serve men and women and children. The men are in one building. Women are in another Women and children are in another building, but they serve, um, and they have Bible studies to help them, but I'm not able to speak the word of God. Like what? Like they're, because people would get angry and then, um, I would play my, and there's like this intercession for like 10 minutes in between after we've set the tables and the food's already ready and we're just ready to serve. There's this short intercession for about 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes sometimes, where we're just waiting to, for the specific time where we serve the people. And, and during that time, I play my ukulele. And it's never been a problem until recently where this one person His, his demons are being stirred up around me. And he he's full of a lot of anger and some strong demons. And um, he is so pissed about my ukulele playing for no good reason. And, um, you know, was trying to tell me to stop playing my ukulele. But, you know, that didn't, didn't go down so well with me because I'm like, mm -hmm. You're not gonna, you're not gonna stop me from worshiping God, and um, and and uh, uh, there's different leaders on different days, and some leaders are okay with my ukulele playing, but this one guy, he's not okay with it, and um, um, and then so they had called me in for a meeting today, 
and the lady I met with was saying that I'm not following the code of conduct, which says you can't have extensive religious conversations with people. Well, I'm not having extensive, first of all, this hypocrisy because it's supposed to be a Christian based program. So uh, that makes me mad. And then extensive, well, I'm sharing scripture. I'm not going into a bunch of doctrines. I'm just sharing scripture. So it's not extensive. Um, and uh, and then also I'm not uh, operating in the, in the boundaries of my task because I play my ukulele. Um, but I, I, I was willing to compromise on that because I could just, yup, I'm still gonna worship God. Nobody's gonna take that from me. And if they wanna kick me out because I refuse to stop worshiping God, then so be it. I can worship God without a ukulele. And, um, but I won't compromise on sharing God's word. And so they're going to write up a new, um, uh, contract for me to sign. We'll see what they put in it, but I won't compromise on the sharing of God's word. And I'll stop bringing the ukulele, but I won't stop worshiping God. Um, you know, the Bible says, though, I live by the word of God and the word says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay. So I'm going to worship God because I get into his presence and I get uplifted in my spirit and I love him and he loves me. And, and that is my relationship with him. And nobody's going to come in between me and God. And, um, that's not even, that's not cool. Um, so we'll, we'll see what they say, but let me tell you, oh, it's been hard today. I have, um, oh man, I've been so angry, been so angry, ha had unforgiveness. And God was reminding me of this scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I was going through a really hard time today after that meeting, and I am kicked out until I sign this new contract, which they're going to come up with, but which I don't know if I'm going to be able to even go back because I'm not compromising on sharing God's word. Um, um, so I was angry. I was angry. I had unforgiveness toward, which I know is a sin. God says you have to forgive. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. I know, I know that, you know, unforgiveness is unacceptable in walking with the Lord and it grieves the Holy Spirit. And if I don't forgive, God won't forgive me of my sins. So, um, I don't take unforgiveness lightly. I'm a, I'm very aware uh, when the, you know it puts me out of order with God, and I don't want to be out of order with God. So, um, God was giving me this scripture, and when I would switch, like in my mind, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. When I would take away my anger from her and remember, okay, it's spirits that are operating in her, it's spirits that are operating in these people. And I would view it with a perspective of not being flesh and blood that we're wrestling against. And I would view it, I would view this situation with the scripture, right? Looking at things with the right lens. I, um, the anger inside towards that person was appeased and it was gone. And then when I would start to become angry at her, again, I'd be like, oh, I'm like, okay, oh, no. I remember, I remember. I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's truly, it's truly not against flesh and blood. It is truly against spirits. So, you know, God's word is so powerful. It really, really helps cut out evil things inside of us and helps us see things with the right perspective. So, 
we can walk in forgiveness um, and and walk in love and peace you know like like when people are really mean to you like I can love I can love them because I know that they just they have the antichrist spirit they need to be born again and or even if they're Christians like I just know that you know I can, I can love them because they're not seeing things right and it's truly not people I'm wrestling against it's demons and people and um God's word is so amazing and so powerful I just wanted to share this and hopefully it'll you know maybe be edifying to you in your walk somehow um uh here's a good scripture it's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Oh, it's so hard. You know, it's it's a war. It's so hard to let go of that bitterness and anger when people are, are so wrong. Oh, when coming against the, oh, right now it's coming against my worship to God and my anger, my uh, sharing scriptures. Oh, it makes me so mad. It makes me so, so mad. But, you know, but this Ephesians 6.12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. Oh, it's so helpful. You just have to, you have to look at things for the right perspective and then you can do it. You can let go of that bitterness and that malice and that anger and that wrath and you can let go of it when you look at things through the spiritual perspective. You know, it's just about changing your perspective of things we're going to love our enemies and pray for them, you know, for they know not what they do. Jesus, as they were nailing him to the cross, he said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. They are blinded by Satan. We are, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. I hope this helps you. Um, pray for me, please, because I know um, uh, God can move mountains and the prayer of a righteous man availeth much and God, this is not over, and God can use me to tear down wrong strongholds in this place that I could sense. You know, like, they have this thing where you can't really talk to the guys that work there. I mean, the guys in the program was just like, what? Like, what? Like, they don't want you to have really, it's like, so it's the money. It's just some weird stuff going on in there. It's just, it's just things in the spirit that are not right. And, um, and, um, God can use me to tear down some stuff. Just pray, please, please intercede for me. I, I don't always know what all to pray, but, you know, if I have, you know, if you pray, it could help. Maybe you'll pray something I don't think of, um, you know, into God's, God's will. And, um, pray for me to be tender-hearted and meek I need help being meek because when I get angry I don't I'm not very meek um pray for God to tear down the strongholds in this place um and that his light would shine more because a lot of the, the, the people that are in this program are hurting and also the homeless come in and they're hurting they're trying to make it where I can't even like talk with the homeless. <laughs> they're like, well, you don't know where their mindset is and how they're thinking. And like, I don't, but I'm going to speak life to help them through it. Like, why would you want to stop that? But it's demonic, y'all. It's just demonic. It's just from Satan. So pray, okay, pray that God would put me back in there and continue to use me there because. Everywhere I go, I get rejected. It's so hard. I don't know where I'm going to go. Um, I really don't want to stay home all day long every day. Um, pray for me. Thank you. Bye-bye.